So how is the Christian vote being seen in Kerala? Joining me now is Reverend Valsan Thampu, Christian theologian. He joins me from Thiruvananthapuram. Uh, Reverend Thampu, some dioceses in the, of the Siro Malabar Church screening the Kerala story for higher secondary students and youth in general. Church leaders say it's not a political move, but coming on the eve of elections, uh, many believe that it's an attempt to make community members aware of alleged love jihad. Uh, is this, isn't this, a, this stand a clear hint in a way to community members to maybe even back the BJP in the Lok Sabha elections, especially in seats like Thrissur and Patnam Tita, where uh, the BJP is uh, fancying its chances? Yes, it can certainly be read in that light. But I doubt if this will have the desired effect. It could even prove counterproductive because the people of Kerala are generally aware of the strategies that the BJP has been using. Mm -hmm. And the uh, vast majority of them are resentful of it. And therefore, I feel that the likelihood of steps like this backfiring uh, is far greater than it yielding any substantial political dividend to the but, BJP. But Reverend, but, but Reverend Thampu, the BJP obviously is cheering the church stand. In your view, uh, the political messages, uh, will they be followed by community members? You seem to believe that it will backfire. Are you telling me that community members do not decide their voting preferences based on the message sent out by the church in Kerala? Is that right? Actually, in this case, the BJP has seriously miscalculated because it's been briefed wrongly on the ground realities pertaining to the Christian community. What the BJP overlooks is the fact that the ordinary believer in Kerala, the ordinary member of the church, is now getting increasingly alienated from the church authorities. In fact, never before in Kerala have the church leaders been so viciously attacked by the lay people. Organized lay groups are resisting the authority of the church, and they have seen through the games that the bishops have been playing. And in fact, many people in Kerala know that they are forced to play this role because unfortunately, many of them are seriously compromised. Uh, they are vulnerable because... Uh, they know, and many people in Kerala know, that the ED has got substantial grounds to proceed against them. Therefore, they have a need to keep the BJP priest in order to keep the arm of law from getting at their throats. So the ordinary Christian in Kerala, the vast majority of Christians in Kerala know that the kind of political posturing uh, the church leaders are making are meant only to save their own skin. And uh, they also know that this could uh, mean long-term harm to the community, particularly because the main ideological principles of the Sangh Parivar are known to the common man in Kerala. Uh, they know how the religious minorities are seen as foreign bodies by the Sangh ideology. And unless until there is a credible and authentic recantation of that stand, which is set uh, to happen, uh, the the informed voter of Kerala from the Christian community is unlikely to buy uh, the various posturing the BJP is making in relation to the bishops of Kerala. And many of the bishops are seriously discredited. And therefore, um, I feel again that the BJP could lose. And in fact, the uh, results in the two uh, recently held assembly by polls indicate that the popularity of BJP has waned rather than increased through all these, uh, you know, games played with the church leaders. So just one, one final question, because you've been based in Kerala now for some time. Does the Christian community, or at least a large section of it, accept this charge of love, love jihad, what the Kerala story movie uh, suggest do they take it seriously do the community members feel strongly about it is the fear of is extremist islam widespread among community members of the christian community uh, 
that is one picture we now get from social media and from some voices there. Now, to the extent that I know my community, and I think I have fairly extensive contacts with the members of the Christian community, those who are aware of the ground reality simply ridicule and laugh at this idea of love jihads. In fact, extensive investigations were conducted by the NIA. A report was presented in the parliament which unequivocally stated that love jihad is simply a non-existent in Kerala. There's absolutely no evidence. I have myself raised this question, whether or not the Catholic bishops have any data pertaining to love jihad and requested them to release the uh, data they have. The fact of the matter is that till today they have not revealed a single fact pertaining to this, nor have they filed a complaint with the police, which is what they would have done if they had attached any significance to what they are uh, saying in public. And therefore, uh, many, many people, including Christians in Kerala, know that mm -hmm. the bishops are actually inventing a bogey that doesn't exist. And unfortunately, they are under pressure to do so, uh, as I said a short while ago, to protect their own backside. Let me leave it there, Reverend Thapu. I appreciate you joining me and giving us your perspective. Contentious, controversial. You're saying love jihad is a bogey that's being spread and it'll actually backfire in a state like Kerala. I just want to take what you've said just now to me to Anand Kochukudi, a senior journalist who's also joining me now from Kochi. Uh, Anand, if you heard Reverend Thampu there, he seems to suggest love jihad is a bogey. Uh, screening Kerala story by the church is not going to mean uh, any shift in allegiances within the community and it could backfire on the BJP. Do you agree with that or do you believe there is a shift within the Christian community in particular and growing interest uh, in knowing what the BJP stands for in reaching out to the BJP? Rajdeep, I would uh, tend to agree somewhat with uh, Dr. Thampu, Reverend Thampu. Uh, in that uh, the Christian community, uh, you know, they they had uh, some inclination to towards the BJP a few months ago, till the Manipur incident actually made them sit up and uh, analyze, uh, you know, their options. I would say that till the uh, you know Manipur riots uh, uh, and and the magnitude of uh, the riots hit them, uh, they they would have a large chunk of uh, the waters would have uh, the Christian waters, especially the, the Sero Malabar Church, which constitutes 60% of the uh, Christians in Kerala, and their waters would have uh, considered uh, BJP as a viable option because they have never voted for the BJP in, in, in Kerala in the past. They have always been Congress voters. In the last assembly election, a section of them mm -hmm. switched to the LDF when the Kerala Congress Mani group switched to the LDF. So uh, it was expected that if they could shift from the Congress to the LDF, then the, ne the next option would be shifting to the BJP. But the Manipur riots mm -hmm. forced the Manipur riots. I would say that uh, that 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 emotion, uh, you know, that uh, that but uh, is inclination. The, is yeah. the church divided though, Anand? Is the church itself divided in Kerala? And there is a section of the church. There are there may be individual bishops or groups who are clearly uh, perhaps seeing the BJP as a rising force and, uh, nationally and therefore want to align with it? I would say that, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the Sero Baraba Church, of course, is divided in Kerala. The Ernakulam Angamali Archdiocese is, a, you know, it's, it's standing uh, as a rebel faction within the church. And uh, the other diocese, uh, they, they are together. But even the other diocese, uh, dioceses which uh, which was willing to do business with the BJP, even they have had a change of mind after the stepping down of Cardinal George Allen Cherry. And there's a new major archbishop. His name is uh, Ra Rafael Tatil. Uh, he's based in Trishul. So he, when he, uh, you know, became the major archbishop, the church once again, uh, you know, they they I think recalibrated their. Uh, position and now they have, uh, you know, gone back right. probably to the Congress. I would say that uh, the uh, the inclination of, uh, uh, you know, Rafael Tatil himself, he's, he comes from a Congress family. It's probably one reason that he has managed to get the mm. charge to back the Congress once again. But then you're referring to the Kerala story. It was actually, uh, you know, uh, in Idiki. Idiki uh, in, in the, uh, you know, the hilly part of uh, the, it's, it's actually one of the uh, you know, the dioceses where 
the Love Jihad bogey was, uh, you know, initiated in 2015 when the late uh, former bishop, uh, Ani Puri Katil, he was the one who first uh, propounded this Love Jihad theory back then in 2015. Uh, he, he claimed that the young Christian women were being lured by not just the Muslim community, but he also named the Irava community, which had snowballed into a big right. controversy. Then, then it was then brought to, you know, then it was, uh, you know, just limited to the Muslim community. Of course, there were some, uh, you know, people who left for the ISIS, but then this was all mixed up and the Kerala story, uh, you know, is being screened now. But then it was only screened to the catechism students of the diocese, just 11th and 12th standard students of the diocese. The church, uh, upon you know my inquiries, they say that it has nothing to do with their voting preferences, but it's just a, uh, you know, it's just a, uh, you know, they're showing it as yeah, a precaution it, to them. It's, yeah. But it's interesting that it's all happening on the eve of elections. It just shows how even a movie can become part of a political uh, a messaging campaign on both sides. Uh, but Anand Kochudi for joining me there and giving us the background to what's been happening on the ground there in uh, Kerala. I appreciate you joining us. Just to tell our viewers, remember parts of central Kerala, Trisur in particular is one seat which the BJP is looking at very closely in this election. And that's where the Christian community does have a major role to play. We'll see how that plays out in Kerala. We need to move on from Kerala to the state of Maharashtra, where uh, the battle lines, at least in Mumbai, are drawn. And you're going to have Thakre versus Thakre, it seems, Pawar versus Pawar in the Lok Sabha polls this time. Uh, the Maharashtra Vikas Agadi's announcement of a seat sharing seems to have upset the Congress, especially in Mumbai. Meanwhile, the Maharashtra Navnirman Sena chief Raj Thakre has now vowed to support the NDA unconditionally in the Lok Sabha polls. The Maharashtra Deputy Chief Minister Ajit Pawar is making a pitch to voters to vote for his wife, Sunetra Pawar, this time. As I said, it's family versus family, and uh, that means that Maharashtra's politics is split wide open. Let's give you a quick update of what else is making the headlines on the election trail. Kachatibu Island continues to be a political flashpoint in Tamil Nadu. Prime Minister Narendra Modi was on the campaign trail there and raised the issue again, taunting the Congress. Digvijay Singh defended the moves taken by Nehru and uh, Indira Gandhi in the part, says no one lives on the island anyway. There was another big jolt to the Amadmi party today in Delhi. Its minister here, Raj Kumar Anand, quit the party, saying that AAP is embroiled in corruption. AAP Neta's claim, Raj Kumar, who was uh, investigated by the ED a few months ago, will now join the BJP. Double whammy for the West Bengal government. The Calcutta High Court directed a probe into the NIA attack in Bengal, also ordered a court-monitored CBI probe into the Sandesh Kali case. BJP released its 10th list of nine candidates for the Lok Sabha polls. The BJP has dropped their sitting MP Hiron Kher from Chandigarh. She's a two-time MP, fielded Sanjay Tandon instead. Okay, today's campaign trail is from Amethi, where Union Minister Smithy Rani is campaigning hard to retain the seat. Remember, in 2019, she created one of the big upsets of the elections, defeating Rahul Gandhi the Congress leader. This time, Smriti Irani is challenging Rahul Gandhi once again to a fight. Samarth Srivastav spent the day with Smriti Irani on the campaign trail. ये रण अमेठी का है जहां एक और स्मृति ईरानी की कैंपेनिंग लगातार जारी है तो वहीं राहुल गांधी चुनाव लड़ेंगे या नहीं उसको लेकर अभी स्थिरता नहीं है आप तस्वीरों में देखेंगे तो स्मृति ईरानी केंद्रीय मंत्री हैं अमेठी से सांसद हैं वो अमेठी में आई हैं और कैंपेनिंग चल रही है नवरात्र का मौका है आप देख सकते हैं माता रानी का आशीर्वाद लेने स्मृति ईरानी यहाँ पहुंची हुई है और माता का आशीर्वाद लेंगी और तस्वीरों में देखिए जो जनसंपर्क है वो भी लगातार उनका चल रहा है और जिस तरह से अमेठी से जुड़ी हुई हैं स्मृति ईरानी वो तस्वीर आप लगातार यहाँ पर देख रहे हैं और कहीं ना कहीं इस कैंपेनिंग के जरिए एक पहुंचने की कोशिश है और तब बड़े बड़ी बातें यहाँ पर साफ दिखती हुई नजर आ रही हैं। 
ये तो पांच साल से हम उन्हीं के नाम से काम कर रहे हैं और ये उनका परिवार है हमें पूरा विश्वास है कि राहुल जी यहाँ से चुनाव लड़ेंगे और जीतेंगे जी हम लोग इस मोदी जी को चाहते हैं स्मृति रानी तो हमारे यहाँ की है ही है मगर हम लोग प्रधानमंत्री जो योजनाएं चला रहे हैं हम लोगों के लिए हम लोग उससे बहुत खुश हैं अमेठी अपने सम्मान की लड़ाई लड़ेगा राहुल गांधी के खिलाफ अमेठी अपने संरक्षण की लड़ाई लड़ेगा राहुल गांधी के खिलाफ जिसने अमेठी को त्याग दिया और त्यागने के बाद भी बार बार अपमानित किया जिस अमेठी में नरेंद्र मोदी ने विकास किया अमेठी उस नरेंद्र मोदी को आशीर्वाद देगी Smriti Irani campaigning in Amethi at a time when Congress hasn't announced its candidate. You can clearly see Smriti Irani on the day of Navratri taking of offering prayers in the temples and along with the BJP leaders. She is on the ground as announced by the BJP. But Congress is yet to announce the name of their candidate, be it Rahul Gandhi, Robert Wadra, or Priyanka Gandhi. The uncertainty over Amethi remains. While on the other hand. the bjp is on the ground in amethi the local leadership of bjp smriti irani who ha- who is the candidate for bjp and is trying I and mean, she is also daring rahul gandhi at the same time that in a way asking him to come here and fight against me that has been the dare why the smriti irani is going to be worth seeing whether congress will accept the dare and will place rahul gandhi from here or not with cameraman gorav samarth shivastav for india today That's all we could pack in on this edition of Elections Unlocked.